Good morning, Vision family. My name is Pedro Rosario. I am the operations director at Vision Church. I'm so glad you're here this morning. Our senior pastor, Jerome Gay, is on sabbatical. He's spending some needed time with his family, just relaxing during this time. He's worked very hard to try to get us to the point we are. So he usually takes some time in the summer so he can spend time with his family. Well, thank you, visitors. You've got many choices now across the world to be able to join church. So I also want to thank the, um, our members as well for joining us week after week. So if you're a visitor, let us know, and we'll be glad to just touch base with you and let you and give you some information about our church. Just a little bit about myself. I've personally been working with Crown Financial Ministries for over 20 years, working and coaching families on financial discipleship. I was born and raised in New York City in Spanish Harlem, and I've got a wonderful wife going to 32 years in August of Robin and a son, Parker, who is a senior at college and also a sophomore at college, Ariana. So one of the great things that we do at Vision is that we stand up as a way of honoring God. We stand up when we read his word. So if you could pull up Matthew 6, 19 through 20, and we try to read out of the Christian Standard Version. So when you have it, just say that you have it, and we'll be able to move forward. But it's Matthew 6, 19 and 20. I like to read when I read God's word a little slow so I could digest it. And so I'm going to read it that way. It says, Matthew 6, Don't store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and thieves don't break in and steal. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for this passage. We just pray for guidance and direction on what you want us to to learn, I pray everybody would just be focused and concentrating on what you want them to take out of it so that they will be changed because they've heard your word. Thank you for the promise of the fact that your word never comes back void. And Lord, we have read your word and you promise it doesn't come back void so that we will be able to just treasure it and do what it says. Thank you, Father, in your son's mighty name. Amen. So I would like to take this opportunity for you to look at this bottle. So the bottle has water in it. So what do you think? Is it half full or is it half empty? Make a choice because your perspective is going to determine as soon as you see it. I'll shake it so you can see it. And if you don't mind writing down, if you're able to on, the, on your computer, is it half full or half empty? So we could see a survey and do that. For me, I see this as half full. But it's just the perspective, the way I look at it. Now, we want to think of our lives in the terms of a dot and a line. Significantly, it's two different phases. Our present life on earth is a dot. It's got a beginning, it's got an end, and it's brief. However, from that dot, we have a line that extends and goes on forever. That line is eternity, which Christians will spend in heaven. Right now, we're living in a dot, but we have to ask ourselves this question. What are we living for? One perspective is to live for the dot. Another person's perspective is to live for the line. Some of the concepts that I've grabbed from Andy, Randy Alcorn's book, The Treasure Principle, it used to be called Money, Possessions, and Eternity. But I'm focusing more on the eternity part of the book, and I've also added some things on my own. But that's, I want to give him credit for that. So as we look at perspective, we have to look at it. It's a way we look at things. It's a framework of reference. Perspective is a broad grid through which we look at life. You can take different routes. You're going to see different things. And you will see the same thing from a different perspective if you look at it from a different angle. So when that happens, we see more dimensions. We begin to understand at deeper level what something actually is. So we have to decide, to, do we live for the line or do we live for the dot? An example of this is I have to take my kids to college in August when they start. 
So Parker, I'm going to take him to Indiana, and we have a way of making a 10-hour trip into 14 hours because we go to small towns. We'll stop at places. Our perspective is let's enjoy ourselves. Let's enjoy the time as we're going there. It's not just about rushing there. I do the same thing when I go to Pittsburgh, that eight-hour drive. I might take it a little bit longer, a different way. Mountains one day, city the next time I take it. But it's a different perspective. It gives me different opportunities so that we could look at things from a different way. So if we're living for the dot, that dot, earth, we understand it's short. But do we clearly understand the importance of how short it is? That dot is God's plan for us. But so is the line. We spend so much time on the dot, but we have to really focus our time on the line. As I said, the dot has a beginning, it's got to end, and it's short. After that dot is done, eternity begins and will go on forever. So what are you living for? God's word clearly tells us that we cannot take anything from the dot to the line. So in other words, we can't take anything from earth to eternity. Look at it this way. Have you ever seen a U-Haul truck following a hearse? You don't. You can't, you can't take it with you. Another example is King Tut's tomb. The way they looked at it was they buried the king with all the treasures. And when they found this in 1922, they discovered, guess what? All the treasures were still in there. So even though King, king Tut assumed that they were going to be able to live better, enjoy life, by taking and putting all these treasures in their tomb, you cannot take it with you. 1 Timothy 6, 7 tells us this. We didn't bring anything into this world, and we won't take anything with us when we leave. So we have to understand that concept. So God wants us to think about the line. John 14, 2 says, My house, my father's house has many rooms, if it not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me, that you also may be where I am. So if you understand here, the picture is God's preparing a place for us specifically, for Pedro and for you. And Matthew 5, 12 says, rejoice. I say rejoice and be glad in it because great is your reward in heaven. So we're all going to have rewards in heaven. We just can't make the rewards physically and take them with us. God wants us to spend more time living for the line, not living for the dot when we're in the dot. An example of this is Colossians 3, 1 and 2. If you have, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above not on earthly things. So where are we setting our minds? Is it on things above or is it on things on the earth? All our treasures on earth will stay on earth, but the treasures we store up for ourselves in heaven will last forever. They will never run out. So let's make sure that we start thinking and living every single day with an eternity mindset. So there's some questions that I'd like to ask myself, and I would like for you to answer and ask yourself as well. The first question is, how differently would we live our lives if we had an eternity mindset? What would we do different? Here's an example of answering that question. Would we make it a priority to attend church weekly? And that looks different today because of COVID, but will we make it a priority to make sure that on a weekly basis... And understand that if you miss a week, you're traveling, it's about your priority and what is your heart. Are you trying to not go weekly? Another question that you could ask yourself is, what choices would be made differently? What choices would be made differently? So an example of that is, would you use colorful words in a conversation? I've heard many people say different things when they're in a Christian group compared when they're not in a Christian group. But if our mindset is an eternity mindset, maybe we shouldn't use colorful words. Because understand, when we 
or speaking to a friend or somebody, that might be the only Jesus they hear, is how you speak and what you say. A third question is, would you treat others differently? Would you treat and be more patient with your neighbor? Maybe with your spouse, maybe with your kids, maybe with your boss. So an eternity mindset just stops and looks at those things. A fourth question that we could ask ourselves is, would we waste as much of our time? There's many opportunities to do a lot of things and to get involved in other areas, but are they for earth or are they for eternity? And wasting time, it's easy for me sometimes to go home, I'm tired, exhausted, and maybe spend three or four hours watching TV. Maybe we should just spend a little bit of time watching TV, because we do have to defrag. Computers have to defrag, we have to defrag. It's a great time for us to just stop and slow down, but how much of that time do we do? So we need to ask ourselves these questions, and we need to challenge ourselves to stop living for the dot and start living for the line. Pastor Adrian Rogers put it this way, wisdom is looking at life through God's viewpoint. And I would say is wisdom is looking at life through eternity's viewpoint. So if we take a step back and understand that we could look at something from a different viewpoint. So if we look all the way to the left, all the way to the right, and we step back, we look at a different angle, it gives us a different view at things. So our perspective is influenced by everything. It's influenced by our attitudes, our mindsets, our viewpoint, our outlook, and our beliefs. Everything influences our perspective. You could have two individuals living in the same household. They're going to have different perspective of different things. So what I'm encouraging people to do is look at life from heaven's perspective and look at it from God's point of view. Isaiah 55, 8 gives us this picture. The Lord says, my thoughts and my ways are not like yours. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, my thoughts and my ways are higher than yours. So this is a great illustration of understanding that there's a totally different way of looking at things. My thoughts and my ways are not like yours, the Lord says. So we have to understand that. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, Things that I have seen don't last forever. But things that I have not seen are eternal. That's why we need to keep our eyes on the things that cannot be seen. So if I think of the scripture verse, and I'd like to break the scripture verse down, is what is it that we see? We see earth, we see the things in there, and 2 Corinthians 4, 18 is telling us those things will not last. But the things we cannot see, man, those things last forever and eternity. So we want to make sure that that is what we're focusing on. Now, let's think of decisions which we make every single day for the dot or earth. This is what Matthew 6.22 tells us. Your eyes are like a window for your body. When they're good, you have all the light you need. But when your eyes are bad, everything is dark. If the light inside of you is dark, you surely are in the dark. So that's a great picture of what is going, what are you looking at? What is your perspective? So we need to ask ourselves, the relationship with the person that we have, are they driving us to the Lord or are they driving us away from the Lord? So there's a lot of relationships that we might have that we know is not driving us to the Lord. And we just need to pray about it and make that decision, even friendships. So are we also helping those friends and we driving them to the Lord? We also need to be careful the things that we view in our website. There's so many things that are so easily we could see in our eyes that we just need to close it as quickly as possible or change what we're doing there because what's going into our eyes are going to influence us. Also watching hours of TV. What are we specifically watching? I'm not saying there's something wrong with you watching specific TV. I'm just saying how much of it, and just be careful what you watch. And also decisions about Earth is social media. Man, I could get lost in that. 
Sometimes, you know, it's late in the day. I forgot to do my personal devotion. So, you know, it's something in social media. I go look at it and I realize without even knowing, 30 minutes have disappeared. It didn't help me at all. It disappears. Sometimes we just have to turn it off. Sometimes we just need to move on from it and capture that. But I don't want to spend any more time on dealing about the earth. I want to spend a majority of our time talking about eternity. So think about decisions which we need to make for the line. Faith work, framework is what we need to create. We need to create that framework of faith. John 14, 21 says, if you love me, you will do what I have said, and my Father will love you. I will also love you and show you what I am like. Boy, that's a great picture of creating that framework of faith in John 14, 21. These are some things that we could do to help us with that framework. First thing is pray daily without ceasing. Pray daily. And this is a great example. It just happened last Saturday. I was doing my um, sermon, getting prepared, and I got a phone call from a prayer warrior, Elder Belt. He sends me a text. He says, hey, I was praying, and I felt like I needed to call you, and you were heavy in my heart. So he called me, and boy, did I feel loved and cared for because here, this elder, this brother of mine, was able to pray, and I said, yes, can you pray for the sermon? He didn't know I was doing the sermon at that time. Also, can you pray for my daughter? We have to get an apartment in Pittsburgh because of the whole housing situation has changed for her college. So those are two prayer concerns that I was able to give to him, and he was able to love me through it because he prays without ceasing. And also, many times as I'm mowing, a simple thing is mowing or I'm doing something, if it comes to my mind, I just give it to the Lord and spend that time and effort there. So that's one thing we could do to create our framework for faith. Another one is talk to God. If you think about a communication, the communication that we need for our um, relationships that we have for our friends, for our spouses, for our kids, it's important for us to also have a communication with our Father, to talk to Him on a regular basis. He wants to hear from us. He wants to experience what we're going through. And when we do that, we're actually thinking about the Lord. So make sure that we talk to him regularly. Third thing we could do is read God's word daily. Spend some time. Try to you know, motivate yourself maybe one time to read through the Bible in a year. If you're not able to do it that day, maybe you could listen to God's word as you're traveling in the car. Or maybe you could hide somewhere in the house and read God's word. But make sure that you are spending time reading his word. Now, the fourth thing that I put in here is something that Elder Jesse talked about two weeks ago. Discipleship relationships. We need to continue and develop discipleship relationships. That's a crucial part for us to be able to grow, for us to be able to help others grow, and for us to be able to help the church grow as well. So if we, even if you're not comfortable, you know, reach out to somebody, say, hey, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to trust the Lord. I'm going to take that step of faith in the Lord and just see what the Lord has. And if somebody asks you for you to disciple them, say, you know what? I don't know what we're doing, but let's do it together and we can love ourselves through it. Fifth thing is memorize God's word. Boy, when you put God's word into your heart, it's amazing that many times it'll come back just at the right time that you need it. So memorize God's word. So part of what I did when I was with Crown Financial Ministry is we taught the 10-week Bible study. We had to memorize 10 scripture verses in that time. And when we did that, it was hard for me. So what I did, I got creative. I did a three-by-five card, and I wrote that in there, the scripture verse. I put it in the car. I put it in the bathroom. Anywhere I could put it. I put that in there so that I'm constantly looking at it and viewing it and be able to memorize it. And guess what? If you don't memorize it and you're able to paraphrase it, that's still a blessing. And then six, when you're thinking about the line, boy, take every opportunity you could to share God's word to others. When someone asks you, hey, can you pray with me? Pray with them. When somebody asks you, hey, can you spend some time in this area with me? Yes. 
Make sure that you're sharing the gospel. Make sure you're talking to people about God's word and take those opportunities to share it. So you knew I was going to talk about finances. So number seven thing to look at is how you spend your resources. So if you're thinking for the line and you're making decisions for the line, how are you spending your resources? Luke 16, 11 says, if you cannot be trusted with the wicked wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? So think about it this way. If you cannot be trusted with the earthly wealth that says wicked, who's going to trust you with true wealth, the eternal wealth? So how do you spend your money? We're not talking about giving yet. We'll do that in a second. But every facet of your budget, create a budget, create a plan Write it down so you as a couple or, or individuals get an accountability partner if you're single so that you could talk to somebody about that budget. You could talk to somebody about the decisions you make. We're not saying don't spend some money going on vacation or getting some gum, but just know what decisions you're making with the resources you have. Because what we want to do is when money comes our way, we want to be a flowing river. When money comes that way, it hits our hands, and it flows and helps other people. We'll use some of it for our resources, for what we need, but we want to make sure that we are a river. The contrary to that is we could be a dam. When that money comes, we hold it up, and everything gets stuck where we touch it. That's not what we want. We want it to be a flowing river, for it to flow right through us, for us to use it for what kingdom purpose, what he wants us to so let's talk about giving. Giving, crucial part of being a believer and taking that step of faith. Everybody is in a different journey, a different section of that faith. But a great place to start or a great place to shoot for, 10% is what God says as a tithe. What the definition of a tithe is 10%. If you're not there, work towards getting there. If you're there, awesome. So in the giving piece, Matthew 6.21 says it this way. My heart will always be where my treasure is. So where is your treasure? So is your treasure on earth or is your treasure in heaven? So it says your heart. And it says will always, not sometimes, but it will always be where I put my treasure. So hopefully our treasure, we're building that big treasure for eternity. These are some things that we already have as a church body available to you that you can take advantage of. The first one is, is daily prayer calls with um, Elder Belt. All these are at visionrdu.com. So Monday through Friday, 6.30 a.m. I know it's early, but if you want to go for a walk or if you just want to listen or if you just want to roll out of bed and put on your phone and be able to listen to the prayer that that man has. He definitely has a passion to love you, to love the Vision family. He wants to pray for you. So those are available Monday through Friday at 6.30. We also have weekly virtual intercessory prayers that Elder Belt also leads. They took a break during July, but starting August 5th at 6 p.m., these are Zoom, so you go to visionrdu.com once again and then look at the information so you could be able to see when the prayers are. We also have virtual community groups. It's a tough time right now through COVID. Don't allow yourself to be isolated by yourself. Connect with people that are of faith. Connect with people that are going to help you to walk and to think from an eternity perspective. So these virtual community groups are going to start up again August 3rd, the week of August 3rd. So if you go to visionrdu.com, this time go to community groups, you'll be able to see where they are. And Chris and Adrian have done a wonderful job making sure that everything is set up for the community virtual groups. As we continue to make decisions for the line, these are some other scripture verses that will help us out as well. 1 Timothy 6, 17 through 19. Warn the rich people of this world not to be proud or to trust in wealth that is easily lost. Tell them to have faith in God, who is rich and blesses us with everything. We need to enjoy life. Instruct them to do as many good deeds as they can and to help everyone. Remind the rich to be generous and to share with what they have. They will lay a foundation, a solid foundation for the future 
that they will know what true life really is. So 1 Timothy is telling us a couple of things. One is to warn the rich people. So if you think about it from a world perspective, people in the U.S., people in Raleigh, people of vision are wealthier compared to other people in other parts of the country. So we do have wealth. Everybody's different, I understand. But it, 1 Timothy says to have faith in God because he's going to bless us. Also, it instructs us, it instructs us to do Many good deeds. So what good deeds are we trying to do? So understand the good deeds, that is not about salvation. That is after you're a believer, you want to be able to do good deeds. So you could bless others. And it says in scriptures to help others. So my mom is a great example of this. 80 years old. She's right now stuck in New York City in her apartment, not being able to come out. But boy, as we were growing up, my dad left us in high school. So she had four kids at that time. One was already gone from the house. Four kids, a single mom, overnight. And she would still love people. She would still do things for people. It might be cooking or it might be helping them, but she was still helping and doing good deeds for everybody. So it's not just about money. There's things that we could do. And God's word tells us to make sure that we're doing good deeds. So Matthew 6, 24 tells us no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one, love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So if we look at this verse and understand it clearly, there's two masters we have to deal with, God and whatever the other thing is that we're dealing with. So there's 2,350 scripture verses dealing with finances. That's a lot of scripture verses dealing with finances. And God said to be cautious of that. It's not, we cannot do it. And the reality it is, we could put in there, do not serve God. We cannot serve God and underline. In fact, why don't you go ahead, what you hear people serving. You don't have to put what you do, but in your own heart, what are you serving instead of God? And maybe you could write down what you don't want to serve. And you want to serve God. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2 says, such a large crowd of witnesses is all around us. So we must get rid of everything that slows us down, especially the sin that just won't let go. And we must be determined to run the race that is ahead of us. We must keep our eyes on Jesus, who leads and makes us our faith complete. He endures the shame of being nailed to a cross because he knew that later he would be glad he did. Now he is seated at the right hand of God's throne. When I think of Hebrews 12, I think of a race. It talks about a race on one. And I was fortunate enough at Taylor University to run track. So I did a couple of events, but one of the events that I did was the 400 hurdles. The toughest event, in my opinion, that you could do. So you've got one lap you gotta do, and then you've got 10 hurdles. But I couldn't worry about those hurdles when I first got on the track. I had to focus, I had to be deliberate. So to me, the first thing I had to do is get on those blocks. And when I got on the blocks, I put my head down and I would not even look at the starter because I don't need to see the starter. What I need to do is focus on the gun because that's the next thing. That gun, when it goes off, that's my signal to go to the next step. As soon as that gun goes off, now I'm focusing on the next thing that's crucial to me. I've got a hurdle. I've got 15 strides to make it there. And I have to hit it with my left foot, my left leg, not hit it. I have to run through it with my left leg so that I'm being as efficient as possible. As soon as I run over that hurdle, the next hurdle, I try to do that in 14 strides because now I could do it with my right. And that allows me to focus on one thing at a time. Hebrews 12 tells us this is a race, it's a journey. Keep your eyes on Jesus in verse 2. Because he's going to lead us and he's going to make our faith complete. So are we being focused so much on one thing that's going to lead us to Christ or that's going to lead us away? So we need to make sure that we're focusing, we're keeping our eyes on God. Well, we're talking about two foundations here. Matthew 6 24, 27 indicates anyone who hears 
and obeys these teachings of mine is like a wise person who built a house on solid rock. Rain poured down, rivers flooded, and the winds beat against that house. But it did not fall because it was built on solid rock. Anyone who hears my teachings and doesn't obey them is like a foolish person who built a house on sand. So that solid rock foundation that you want is Jesus Christ. He's the one that's going to help you. Understand that life, earth, is going to bring rivers and floods and winds, and it's going to try to knock us down. But what are we setting our foundation? If it's on sand, it'll be moved real easy. And a great example of that, I was able to go to the beach a couple of weeks ago, and there was a storm that night. Man, it was rough. And the next morning, I got up and walked, and I was surprised what erosion occurred within that one night. We almost lost about 10 to 15 feet of sand. So it was pretty bad that water came in and dragged all that sand out in just one night. So it's the same thing when we build things on earth and we put things, um, so much effort on what's happening on earth and we forget that we need to build everything on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. So let's recap a couple of things here. You know, our perspectives influence absolutely everything. It influences our attitudes, our mindset, our viewpoint, our outlook, and our beliefs. It influences absolutely everything. But I encourage you to look at life from heaven's perspective. Look at it from God's point of view. That's what you want to do is you want to stop and ask yourself the questions we talked about and be able to figure out where am I focusing on? Where's my perspective? How can I change from Pedro's perspective to God's perspective? So as we're ending here, there's two choices we have to make. So I'm going to divide into two groups. The believers. That means if you've given your life to the Lord, you've surrendered yourself. Understand that God loves you. And there's still things you need to do. Understand that you could take this time. And I pray that you just put everything aside right now and just focus on what is God telling you? How is God leading you at this point as a believer? Do you have to change your relationships? Do you have to spend more time in God's word? What do you need to do? Spend time and bathe that in prayer so you can do it. But if you're not a believer, there's decisions that you could make as well. So I'm going to try to lead us through the Roman road to salvation. And if you don't know God, this is a great time for you to surrender yourself. Surrender yourself completely so that you're not only living for the dot, but you're making decisions for eternity. So Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Each of us, I have sinned. But Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. It's a free gift. There is nothing you could do beforehand. It's something you could make a decision right now. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. You could do it today. But it's a free gift that you have to accept. Romans 5.8 says, But God demonstrated his own love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So even when we're doing the wrong thing, Christ died for us. So we have to accept that. And Romans 10.9 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. All this because he loved you so much before you even give him, gave him a second. All this because of what he did on the cross. So surrender yourself. If you're a believer, you could still surrender things. If you're a non-believer, surrender yourself. So you could give yourself to the Lord. And you could be thinking about eternity. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank you and praise you for this time. We thank you for loving each of us, Lord, and the time that we've taken to just be able to read your, your word. I pray that people will be able to understand clearly what their next step is as a believer or non-believer. I just pray that they will understand the decisions that they make for earth and the decisions that they make for eternity 
will impact them in such a way. Because as soon as earth is done and our lives here are done, we could start that eternity path forever and be with you forever. And we just thank you and praise you for dying on the cross. And we just thank you, Jesus, for loving each of us. We pray for all these things in your son's mighty name. Amen.